Hi, it's me, Jen. Welcome to my Notion Tour slash tutorial. Don't worry if you can't follow along the instructions. I'll be adding them to the templates link down below. Okay, so first things first. Before you even start layouting your Notion, I think it's important that you create a Pinterest board first. Having a Pinterest board will definitely make your layout more cohesive in terms of color and palette. Um, before I actually started layouting, my notion, I had like four different themes. So there's cafe, pink ethereal, green anime, and soft kid core aesthetic. So with pink ethereal, basically, it's all about pink, obviously, and whites, and golds, and greens, and flowers. And for the gold ones, I mostly used accessories and such, and sparkles, so that it gives off that princessy slash magical vibes so i think it's really important that you know what emotions you'd like to feel when you open your notion so that it'll help you be more inspired writing out your journals and such after the pinterest board i think many of you already know this but you can add widgets to your notion so just go to indify.co and they have different widgets available so there's quotes life progress bar weather and such so now that i have the pinterest boards and widgets out of the way i'm going to start showing you my actual layout. Welcome to my Notion page. So here in the top left corner, it's what I like to call my inspiration corner. Here I have my goals and daily goals so that I co I'm constantly reminded of them and make sure I follow along. And here we have my top three pages, the University Hub Career Journal. I'll be giving you a tour of it guys later after I finish the whole page. Here's the widget I found from Indify.co and it's the little things. These are pages that I don't use as often as these three ones here, but they're still something that I would like to incorporate in my daily routine. So scrolling down, this is my weekly to-do list. I'm not going to delve into how I created this to-do list. I'm just going to link down a video that gives an in-depth tutorial of how it's done because I'm not good at explaining things. This is really convenient because I don't have to create the exact same layout every time a new week starts. So I can just click new week. And there you go, it, caught, it gives me the exact template as below. And after a week is done, I can just move it, all, move it all to the weekly archive. So here on the bottom, I have my main calendar. I'm calling this my main calendar because I actually have calendars in my main pages which are linked to this one. And I'm going to be teaching you how to do that. This only shows dated tasks. So if you click on the arrow here, it actually shows other tasks which have no date so these are under my different sub pages but i don't want to appear here because i only want to see my events here so to create a link calendar all you have to do is copy the link and go to a sub page where you want to put it so here in my university hub i want a calendar all for my academic stuff so what i can do is i can just copy paste the link that i copied and create link database. So I'm going to be deleting this one and show you guys what I've already created. Here I changed the view from table to board and then I have these columns here not sorted in progress and completed. So I don't want career events to be in this board so I can just go to the options and select filter. Add a filter and then I'll set the category to uni. So there you go, it only shows my tasks under uni. So I can also drag it here so that I can know the progress of my tasks. This one's a bit vague because it doesn't have a label on it so I don't know for which course it is. So a really convenient way is that you go to properties and select which properties you want to hide or show. So you can hide the date so that it's cleaner and you can also add the tag. So here in this sample I can see that I have my homework due for environmental science. So I can just move it here when I'm doing it and when it's completed I can just move it to completed but the thing is the completed list tends to you know become long if you have so many tasks tasks that you've completed so what I try to do is that I hide this property so that it looks cleaner that way that's it for the, my first synchronized calendar and here we have my class schedule so it's actually very easy to do so this you just convert the first the title into time and then add your time slots here and here you you create a select property type for the six columns or any number of days that you have classes on and for each row you can just select the tag that's appropriate so even though i have my task board here i also have some tasks that 
I don't know when I need to complete them or just miscellaneous tasks for university stuff. So I usually add this here. And here are my organizations. If you're new to Notion, you can't res resize or crop images. So I have to make sure that this is in PNG form when I paste it so that it has that circular shape. And here I have my resources, just links that I like to access from time to time. So going through my courses, these are all the courses I have for my second semester. And I actually have two templates, this single and double column. And I'll be talking about the single column first. So this is the single column version. You can add here your professor details and then your target grade. I like to toggle it because I don't want to see it constantly. I just want to check it from time to time. So here's the table of contents. So this table of contents is automatic and it depends on your block. I have here topic 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. So if I add another heading here, any kind of heading like a text heading or a toggle heading, it will automatically appear there. I type sample heading and see it automatically appears there. So it's indented by heading 1, the leftmost portion, heading 2, and finally heading 3. So I want to note that I think it's also really effective to take down notes using toggle because here you can see I have a long list of notes and I don't always want to view them. I'd rather like go to topic 2 and such so I can just close it and voila it looks neater that way. This is also effective for active recalling but I want you to note that so if, for example for this topic 5 if I add any kind of heading here so it doesn't show up here so headings under a toggle any kind of toggle don't show up so if you want to create your table of contents it's essential that you use headings that aren't under the toggle list so that's it for the single column but I don't actually always like how a single column works so example if I add an image here so let's say I want to add this image here. Like it takes it takes up an entire space here which I could still use for my notes and it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing at all. So what I like to do is I also have an alternative template which is this double column template. Here we have the double column template. So if I just add an image here As you can see, it definitely looks smaller and I can just move this column here and I can just add text beside it. So I think that's it's way neater that way. And what I also like to do is I like to add a caption figure one. And then I want to copy this block and then add a link here. If you have a long page of notes and a large gallery, it, it's actually really convenient. So. I think it's also important for this double column type if you want these two columns to be synchronous so you have to add a divider below it. The reason why this divider is important is that so that both lengths of these two columns will be equal at all times and also for the table of contents. So here you can see because I don't have any other content yet their title is next to each other but if I add another heading here it will actually come before this image and I don't want that which is why you have to place it below this divider here and you can just add another column like that so that it's convenient for you going to my career page here I have my event table and this is also filtered from the main calendar back and my application so it's just a prospect archive interview schedule and such the industry and here is the entry template which contains information about the company background role description companies requirements and such and here we have the top common interview questions and this is usual for, for active recall so i made it a toggle heading list and here we have my contacts for the any professionals that i might want to contact in the future so to add one i just click the template and then add it so this is my journal. It's arguably my favorite page in this, in my entire notion aside from my homepage. This is Pinterest expired. I wanted it to look like blocks that I'm scrolling through Pinterest. So the important thing here is if you want to achieve this look, it's important that the lengths 
of the images alternate so that these month names don't align and it creates that kind of brick pattern look. So if you click on this, this is my January entry and I just can click toggle and there it is, my entry for the month. You can also turn this into like weekly spreads or daily spreads but I chose monthly because I'm not much of a journal person, I'm still trying. And so how I created this template is it's actually this one. I created four columns and then just for another entry, I can just choose another image and then voila, it automatically does that. Okay, so I also have here my scribbles page. So for anything that is not necessarily a journal entry and my prompts, I just copied this online by the way. I also turned them into toggle list because they can like appear too long and I don't want that because it looks messy. So here are prompts for things that I don't usually write about but can be helpful if I don't know what to write about. So here I'll just check it once I'm done with it. And it's really nice and cute, I think. So next is my self-study. It's basically just the same thing about my courses. So the theme for this one is flowers because I know I just love them. They look so calming and pretty. So I also have here just the same-ish template as my courses. And here is my YouTube channel page. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. But it's basically my content planner page. So the theme for this one is jewelry. So here I have my Notion tour, MM, ganon. Just not much to it basically. And my track master list so that I don't forget to credit the tracks that I put in my videos. And then here's my cookbook. I actually like this page because I like cooking. So here I I have these recipes. So if you open it up, you can actually see the ingredients and how to cook. Wait, that doesn't have. So this there's this have to cook thing and the tags. And if I've tried them or not, I only rate those that I've tried because I'm basing them to how well I cook them. So fried noodles, I think I'm good at this. So I rated it 5 stars out of 5 stars, 5 hearts. So here I just have my rating tags. I, I think I actually cook good fried noodles. My family loves it. And my comments like this one, I need a potato masher because I don't have one. And my grocery list so that I can easily check what recipe I can cook based on it. So here, you know, so here it is. So I've also so categorized them if it's a staple, an extra, or a snack so that I know which to prioritize during grocery shopping. And here's my finance. I'm actually not good at managing my finances, but I'm hoping this would be a start to it. So here's my expense. <laughs> this is a lie. I have spent a lot. I just haven't inputted it here yet. So I've also added a wish list and it has the exact same columns as above so that when I actually purchase it, I can just like move it up there. And then yeah, convert it. It's gone from my wish list because I already have it. Isn't it nice? And then last is my free space. It's just anything that I might want to add in the future but just haven't gotten around to yet. So my reading list. Blade. So my reading list, my watch list, and my clothes to clean out. And by the way, the theme for this one is texture. So just different kind of textures. And that's it. One last thing I, I'd like to add is that I actually added two kinds of template in this video. So one is the ethereal pink layout. So here it has the instructions and it contains all the elements I actually used in my Notion. But the other one is just like a literal blank template so you can so it's up to you how to design it and i will also be linking my pinterest boards so you can use them as themes if you want so that's it for my notion tour i hope you really enjoyed it because i had so much fun doing this and <laughs> i don't know what else to say so like and subscribe i guess bye